So hello there everyone and welcome, it is Niran here and today it is time for something we haven't seen in a while, I know, I keep, for goodness sake, I keep trying to get this going and I think I finally found the time to actually do it. So today we're going to be getting into another episode of FIFA 18 Wimbledon career mode here, our road to glory and finally this is actually going to become consistent. I actually promise on my entire life. It's about time. We're getting into the January transfer window now of season two in the championship for those that can't remember. I think the last episode of this was about a week and a half ago, something along the lines of that. So yeah, we're jumping into some transfer activity to make up for the inactivity of this series in recent times. You can see we'll be jumping into January and we're gonna be completing pretty much the entire month either simming or playing games and then getting into some transfer activity as well. Now we haven't got much money, I did put this forward to you in the last episode when asking for players to sign, but we are going to still try and do maybe two deals in this window. We only have 700k and very limited wages so buying anyone permanently is going to be quite difficult unless we sell someone. I think we can make one permanent signing, I think that's definitely possible if we sell someone in the side, but then anything beyond that might be a little bit difficult. I did talk about about getting in a backup striker last episode that's one thing we definitely need to do we'll be jumping into some transfer activity after the first game of the episode and a little bit of training and here is that training a couple of youth academy players here getting trained as well as some of the younger players in the side there being Bolger and Sibic Koskinen and Shaw though the youth academy graduates or Koskinen still in the youth academy now I think last episode I accidentally left my face cam over the points tally that we had when I was showing off the table so here it is again in the background uh, you can see that we're two points clear of Villa at the top of the table at a halfway stage. I am once again going to be trying to make these sliders more difficult for this episode, but as I was talking about last time, every single time I, I seem to make the sliders more difficult for myself, the AI seem to play worse naturally. So. so the transfer window is now officially open, and that means that Callum Kennedy has gone off to Rotherham United. I think we gained about 150k out of that deal, so that's a little bit more money to go towards bringing players in. So it's time for the first game of today's episode, and as you can see, it's one that's going to feature quite a few tired legs. I was mentioning earlier, we really don't have enough in terms of depth up front, and that's the reason why Taylor and Azora were starting, despite being tired. So here we are then at the Kirkley Stadium, up against Huddersfield Town, and uh, as I was saying going into, you know, going into this episode, I want these games to be more difficult, I don't feel like we should be going into this promotion clash, in a promotion clash. You know, we're top of the table by two points, uh, with four points clear of third place Huddersfield who are top of the playoffs. One thing I was told in the comments section last time was the reason why the AI are underestimating me is because I haven't sold some of the uh, low rated players in the side. And I hear that and it makes sense because I know it's down to star rating, but I can't actually sell those players because Otherwise, we'll actually have no squad depth. Our squad depth is horrendous, quite frankly, as it is. If that's the only way to make them more difficult, we're really going to struggle here. Interception there from Azoro in a dangerous position. Trotter back to Azoro again. Still Joel Azoro through there to Lyle Taylor, and that is 1-0 inside 16 minutes. Really, really good work from Azoro to make that one happen. Really, really good work, actually, under massive amounts of pressure. Keeps hold of the ball, good strength from him, pokes it through there to Taylor, and it's a first-time finish past the young Frenchman, Albin Lafont. Ninth goal of the season as well now for Lyle Taylor. Very impressive tally for him. He's the top goal scorer now across the season, and he's actually knocking on the door of Joel Azoro to become the top goal scorer in the series overall because Azoro has had a pretty poor season as far as goal scoring is actually concerned. Joel Azoro, Lyle Taylor running through the center and Azoro couldn't quite do anything about it. Oh my word. De Silva Lopez. Where did that come from? De Silva Lopez running onto a poor touch strikes first time and almost found a top corner. Huddersfield look a little bit shaky. Then again, so do we. They've given the ball away again here though. Barnes. Taylor, that's a great ball back through to Harvey Barnes again and it's gone in off the hands of Lafont. It is too hot to handle for the Frenchman and with two goals up inside 26 minutes. What a through ball assist from Lyle Taylor that was. Lafont should be saving it to be honest with you. He's coming from Toulouse for this field but he should be saving that. Instead he's parried it into the roof of the net. Trotter's got an overlapping run down the right hand side. It's Leonardo da Silva Lopez here who can cut inside. It's still the Silva Lopez. Lays it off to Trotter. Saved by Lafont. Well we're picking Huddersfield apart at will here to be honest 
honest with you, it's been very easy. I'm not going to lie to you. That's through again. It's Li it's Liam Trotter again, and he's hit the crossbar. Somehow, it'll fall for Taylor, who's offside. Still Mounier. This Oh, that's a great pass back into Mounier. Phenomenal save, though from Walton, who beats it away. Run-making in this game has been amazing. This is Trotter, and it's wide. Trotter has had two unbelievable chances to make it 3-0 now. I don't think it's gonna matter. I, I really don't think it'll matter at all, to be honest with you. As uh, the ball gets put through. Okay, I'm, I'm just... I'm not right. I'm not being funny, but I feel like Walton... Probably could have done a bit more than that, to be honest. I feel like he probably could have dealt with that situation. It's not even a back pass. It was a misplaced through ball from the Huddersfield midfielder. I literally, I pulled the defender away because I was like, it's safer for the goalkeeper to come and deal with it. It was literally on his goal line. It was on his flipping goal line. Ah, oh, for the sweet love of God. I was literally just saying, these missed chances aren't going to mean anything because Huddersfield aren't doing anything. Well, our goalkeeper isn't doing anything, apparently, because that was absolutely abysmal. We're on the edge of half time. We've got one more attack here, I feel. De Silva Lopez brought down in the area, and it's a penalty. I mean, the last segments of this half have been an absolute catastrophe. Yeah, we'll give it to De Silva Lopez. He won the pen, so we will allow him to take it. This is another chance now for us to get a third goal in this game. Please, for the love of God, can we not mess it up? We don't this time. De Silva Lopez does get our third goal, and we now lead 3-1 in this one. It's a nice penalty from De Silva Lopez, but Lafont doesn't even dive, so he made it very easy for the Portuguese winger. Four goals. Am I even playing the same FIFA that I used to? Four goals in 45 minutes. Phil coming forward again here. They've already got forward probably more than they did in the entirety of the first half. Pritchard with the ball in. Not dealt with by Florence or Oshelaja. But the shot is blocked in the end from Mounier. This now is Trotter. There's a man down in the area for us. We will play on though because we found Nzuzi Toko at the back stick. What a save from Lafont from the acrobatics from Nzuzi Toko. What a goal that would have been. Nzuzi Toko has definitely got the pace to get away. Still using it. That's now back into Lyle Taylor. Back out wide again now for Nzuzi Toko. Who's got men to aim at but he goes alone and Lafont saves in the end. And that is the end of the game. We win in that one 3 1. Pretty convincing performance, to be honest with you. Although Huddersfield definitely stepped things up in the second half when they started to bring on some better players. Alright, so we've done with the first game of the episode, and now we're going into the first bit of transfer activity in this episode. We are meeting up with the manager of Mulder FK. We're going to be talking about the transfer here of Erling Haaland. Now, I don't know if you guys know much about this kid. I think he starts the game at 16 years of age, literally, but he's someone I've had on my shortlist and it's been suggested to me quite a few times already in this series. I've already been talking about backup strength in terms of strikers and I feel like he would definitely be someone that we should take a look at. We're gonna offer 800k. If I'm honest with you, I'm not massively convinced this is gonna work, but we're gonna try it regardless. Uh, they want 860. I'm gonna go in the middle. I know that sounds really petty. So we've agreed an actual fee then with Mulder for the player, for the for, for Erling Haaland, who's also a bit of a taller striker. So he offers a bit more in terms of now aerial ability instead of just playing the ball on the ground like we have with Lyle Taylor. Now, the only thing I'm thinking here is if we wipe out our entire budget on a player, we're going to struggle, obviously, to do any contracts. And the only one I'm worrying about is Nzuzi Toko, because I feel like he'll want to pay rise and there's bonuses and all sorts of other stuff that go along with it as well. So I'm a little bit worried about just bringing in a player for 800k and then just not having anything like money at all to then keep someone like Toko. I do not want to allow someone like Toko to go on a free transfer. Now, speaking of the players that could well go out of the door, this is the list. And I know this is going to cause some controversy because it did when we first thought about selling him. But Dean Parrott has been transfer listed. And the reason why is because A, he wants to leave already. So I feel like 
the board are just going to try and push me to sell him anyway. And B, he's not getting any game time. We have so much depth in terms of centre mids. Or, I mean, not that much, but a lot more than the other places in the squad. As you can see, email here from Haaland reminding us to go into negotiations with him. I can't risk that. In fact, I'm, I'm tempted to just give Toko a new contract right now and then we can deal with it afterwards. I feel like that's the better choice of action here. We will delegate the renewal though because that means that we don't have to pay any bonuses to him. Yes, beautiful. Yeah, accept that. Calm. So that's not even any change in wages and I don't think it'll change the amount of money that we have. It hasn't. Beautiful. And we've somehow got 11k in wages now. Why do we have 11k in wages? Have we just cheated the system by accident? You know what? I don't give a fuck. Honestly, I don't even care anymore. Well, in that case, we might as well just go ahead and do the Haaland deal, innit? To be honest with you. I mean, we're now sorting out the contract negotiations with Erling Haaland here. We've already agreed on an 830k transfer fee, which is really good for a player of his overall and his age and his potential. I think that's an absolute bargain. Uh, in terms of contract length, I'm going to go for four, but I know they always go for less than that. No, okay. Haaland is, Haaland is easy to please, seemingly, at the moment. So he's gone for four years and rotation. A slight increase in wages and a signing bonus of 29.5k and appearance bonus of 33.5. Okay, I mean, maybe remove the bonus. Okay, now he wants a bit in more in wages. That's fine. Okay, that's calm. I'd, ra I'd rather that, to be honest with you. We'll accept that. That gives us a bit more in terms of a transfer budget and a little bit less in terms of wages, but still 2,100 left in wages in case we want to do a quite a cheap loan deal or something. I don't know. But we're going to accept that. So basically, that is going to be Erling Haaland, the young Norwegian giant coming in from Molde. So here he is, the man himself. Erling Haaland comes straight in as the new number nine. And this uh, this should be a good signing. This really, really should be a good signing. Obviously not as good as Lyle Taylor and Joel Azoro, but he's so young, he'll grow so quickly. I expect him to be 68 or 69 by the end of the season, probably, and that's only in half a year. High attacking and defensive work rate, and really tall as well, six foot three, offers a little bit more in terms of our current strikers, so we can actually put balls into the box and have a bit more in terms of aerial ability up front now as well, in case we need it. Time for a sim game then now, after that transfer activity, and speaking of that transfer activity, he is starting the game. Erling Haaland will be making his debut in this sim. There's a lot of, um, there's a lot of formational changes going on here, realistically, and I think it can tell because Chris Basham has given Sheffield United the lead. Interestingly enough, I remember him being unbelievably good when we actually played the reverse fixture of this one against Sheffield United, so maybe Basham is someone to bring in. An hour gone and we're still 1-0 down. Visser is on for Azoro. Fleck has now doubled Sheffield United's lead from the penalty spot. Looks as if we're going to lose this one, and we indeed we do. 2-0 at home against Sheffield Sheffield United. Simming once again, and as I mentioned, that Reading game came very quickly after the Sheffield United one, so no time for transfer activity in between. A couple of changes, a bit more rotation once again, a couple of guys going out because they were tired from the United game. Again, a draw would be pretty decent, but already Bodvarsson has given Reading the lead. I think this might be quite a difficult period for us here through January through just the amount of games that we're having to play and sim and the amount of chopping and changing. We don't have much depth in this side. Now 2-0 down thanks to Camorgan. Into the final 10 minutes. It looks as if it's going to be two losses on the bounce. Lyle Taylor does give us a consolation with four minutes to go to make it look a little bit more respectable. Now though it is time for a massive, massive fixture. It might only be the third round of the FA Cup but that is usually where the magic happens and it could be where the magic happens today as we face Everton at Plough Lane. We've played a couple of Premier League sides already in this series, the likes of Manchester City. We obviously beat them. That was an incredible episode and an incredible game and now we face yet another Alright, so here we are then. The FA Cup. It is time for some magic to occur once again. Please, oh please, can we defy the odds here? There though is the man that's leading us out onto the pitch. Deji Oshalaja has been downright incredible since we gave him the captain's armband. This is the big one. AFC Wimbledon versus Everton. A taster of what could be to come if we continue our phenomenal debut season in the championship. There's the Everton side then down at the bottom. Jordan Pickford in goal. A couple of weaker defenders really. In fact there's a couple of youngsters definitely playing. Good challenge though there from Toko. Assured from him. De Silva Lopez. Toko. We can start a bit of a counter attack here with Lyle Taylor. Dozel down this right hand side. It's found Dozel. Cut back for Lyle Taylor. Saved though 
by Jordan Pickford and the first big chance of the game comes to us. It wasn't quite in the corner, it gave Pickford a bit of a chance but it's still a good save from the Englishman. Now it's Calvert-Lewin, this is good passing play from Everton, good block again from Dale Fry but it falls kindly to Calvert-Lewin, now Rooney and it's just, just wide. I honestly thought Rooney would have been scoring there but Wayne puts it just, just inches, millimetres wide. We're keeping them honest still, Lyle Taylor, Azoro through to Dozel who might be offside but it's still Andre Dozel, it's saved though by Jordan Pickford. I think Dozel just allowed Pickford to get on top of him and actually Pickford hadn't even started diving when he deflected the ball wide with his shin. It's been an open game, pretty good for the neutral and Calvert-Lewin slid that through for Sigurdsson who now hits the post. Everton thought they couldn't get any closer but they have somehow managed to as Skilfi Sigurdsson rattles the woodwork. Vlasic into Calvert-Lewin, that's through for Wayne Rooney now and again Rooney misses. Huge, huge chance for Everton's tallies man and England's record goal scorer Wayne Rooney has missed the far post there and Sam Allardyce cannot believe his eyes. Dozel there with the run from Toko. Lyle Taylor back into Toko again that was a brilliant one too. There's a man at the back stick it's Harvey Barnes on rushing and it's 1-0. Harvey Barnes gets his second goal of the episode. We're 1-0 up against Everton ladies and gentlemen this is absolutely huge scenes. What a goal that was as well. Lovely one too. Great passing play, Toko down the right, looks up, sees Barnes relatively unmarked at the back stick and Barnes volleys it back across goal. Really nice finish from him, no chance for Pickford from that sort of range and the man in on loan from another Premier League side being Leicester has given us the lead against Everton in the FA Cup third round. That is huge. Oh my word, we could easily be behind, we could easily have been in front, we could easily have been level with the amount of chances there's been in this game so far. But we have just about been the most clinical and we take our chance there and now Everton have got to come out and attack us even more to get back to level pegging. Calvert-Lewin though, he's going to try and get past Osha Larger, he's twisting and turning, it's still Calvert-Lewin but blocked by Fry. Into injury time in this first half and once again it's been another action packed first 45 minutes of football in this episode and we are on the verge of causing an upset again, just another half of football to go before we reach the fourth round against all the odds once again. Got support in the shape of Azoro, De Silva Lopez was making a great run but it's fallen to Azoro, what a volley but a great save from Pickford. Martino though loses the ball, gets lucky on the bounce though, it's still Gilfie Sigurdsson now. Dale Fry though does excellently to win the ball but then gives it straight to Rooney. Oh my word, Dale Fry, that is not where I wanted you to put the ball at all, I wanted you to put it down the line, let alone centrally. Barnes with an interception, falls kindly to Everton though, this is Schneiderlin, good ball into Calvert-Lewin. And it's curled wide again. Everton, Everton, Everton. They've had all the chances in the world to equalise in this one. That is Calvert-Lewin's last action as Cenk Tosun comes on. The Silva Lopez, I can sense, getting a little bit fatigued down the right-hand side. Also going to bring on Erling Haaland for his first chance to impress, if you like, up top as a played game. So he's going to get 17 minutes at the end of this one. Sandra Ramirez comes on for Wayne Rooney. I've been really surprised with the lack of urgency from Everton, even with just 10 minutes of the game to go. There's only two minutes of the game to go now, and they're barely throwing. I think they've only just started throwing players forward. We're literally into injury time now. They've given the ball away there. We're just commanding the play now. Tomine, this is Dozel. Can he hold on to the ball? He can't, but it doesn't matter anyway. We have won here against Everton in the FA Cup. The Wimbledon fans, unsurprisingly, going absolutely mental. One goal from Harvey Barnes was all that was required to win this one. Pretty disappointed, if I'm honest, with Everton. They were very unclinical. They created a lot of chances, but a lack of urgency. A weird one in the last 20 minutes because they played so well up until then, and then when it really mattered, they just didn't have any urgency or want to throw anyone forward but 1-0 in the end we progress to the fourth round of the FA Cup it is yet another cup giant killing from AFC Wimbledon I feel like this is all that needs to be said about the game six shots for us six on target eight shots for Everton 
zero on target. And Zuzi Toko, rightfully in my opinion, gets man of the match. I know Barnes won as the game with the goal, but Toko was absolutely unreal. I know Everton have Idris a guy, but Nzuzi Toko made him look like a B-Tech version of himself. Whew, giant killing again, ladies and gentlemen. Nothing much going on on the transfer front at the moment. No bids coming in for Dean Parrott. And in terms of loan bids, a lot of our youngsters don't seem to want to go out on loan for some reason. So instead, we're going to focus on the next one up against Scunthorpe, who are rocking a pretty interesting formation going into this one. In theory, we should be able to beat them in this game. We're going a decent way towards doing so with a Leonardo da Silva Lopez goal inside six minutes. He's been very good goal scoring wise in sim games. It's something that I've noticed across this season so far. Novak has actually equalized for Scumthorpe. So into the final 10 minutes, can we grab a winner? No, we cannot. Only one point. The goals and the points are shared between ourselves and Scumthorpe. That's probably the first time I've actually been genuinely disappointed in a sim game this season. Final game action of this one is going to be an away game against Watford here in the Championship. As you can see, they're going into this one with a win against Bolton after two 2-0 two losses on the bounce. Watford are a very good side. Let's not beat around the bush. So this is going to be a very difficult game. Only change for this one is that Aaron Bolger is in for the suspended Nzuzi Toko, who picked up too many yellow cards. And, uh, well, Pereira's given Watford the lead very early on inside one... Inside four minutes, sorry, to give them a 1-0 lead. That team is so good. How is that team even in the championship? They've got Jonathan Tarr and Flippin Smolov. Pereira, we've done well to only lose that 1-0 to be honest with you, but the shocking form in Sims is appearing to continue at the moment, so as you can see, it's left us in, well, not a phenomenal position in terms of the league. We've gone from being top of the table at the start of this episode to being fifth. I mean, we're only three points behind table leaders Leeds United, but we've actually managed to slip below Huddersfield Town, who we beat in the first game of this episode to go about five points clear of them. So that just shows how poor our form has been since then. In the background though now, you're gonna be seeing the Hall of Fame as we start to wrap up this episode. As you already know, this is where all the accolades and records are held for this series, including top goal scorer, most assists, most appearances, favorite player, and all of that sort of stuff as well. And in the top right of the screen now, you'll be able to vote for your player of the episode. Heroics, really, in both games, to be honest with you. Very good performance against Suddersfield, and also, obviously, that heroic victory against Everton. That, though, is going to wrap up today's episode, because I want to leave you on a bit of a cliffhanger for three reasons, actually. First of all, it's because it's deadline day next so that's going to be a cliffhanger in itself if we have any money to spend which leads me on to the second cliffhanger which is basically if we don't sell Dean Parrott or anyone in this side we are actually probably not going to have enough money to actually offer contracts to Joel Azoro and Leonardo da Silva Lopez so that could actually be a series changer. EA are great at making career mode. They've obviously not included any flaws at all, like the fact that you can't physically gain any money during the course of a season. Obviously, you can't ask for money anymore, which I would just usually do, but they took that option out of the game for no apparent reason. You don't get prize money during the course of an actual season, so there's no way for me to actually earn the money to be able to offer those two new contracts. And given it's so difficult to sell players in the actual transfer window, this could prove to be very difficult indeed. And and also, there's the third and final cliffhanger, which is the fact we've been drawn against Arsenal at the Emirates Stadium for round four of the FA Cup. So that is going to be the first game of the next episode. Slap the like button if you're looking forward to that one, because that's going to be a titanic clash on the same level of that historic Manchester City win. Regardless of that though, again, slap the like button if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you're new to the channel as well. It really helps me out. You can follow me on social media. My Twitter handle and Instagram handle are both the same. It's at the official FNG and links are down below. But it's been a pleasure ranting at you guys today. Have a great day. Enjoy yourselves. And goodbye. I roll out with some monsters. Looks like your team and you watches. I do no roll with imposters. Try like the man in the Oscars. I'm drunk of Henry and Foster's. I have a career, I am jobless. This bitch f me so hard. I might just end up unconscious. I like girls in lingerie, especially if it is crushes. Bitch, I am the bigger picture. There is no way you can crop us.